Hello friends and goats, welcome to the Command Valley, my name is Griffin and you're tuning in to the second pre-con upgrade guide for the Kaltime pre-con decks. If you haven't already, go check out Landon's upgrade guide for Elven Empire featuring Lathril Blade of the Elves for his upgrade guide. Today we're covering the Phantom Premonition deck featuring Raynar the Ever Watchful. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by GameGrid. If you are looking for one or two of these decks, then feel free to go on over to GameGrid's website where you can pre-order them and get them delivered right to your house. Helps out the channel and also gets you the cards and the decks that you want. Another reminder, if you haven't already, feel free to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley. Consider joining up today to get access to tons of exclusive perks, exclusive content, play commander with the command valley, and participate in our polls, deciding which games and which kind of commanders that we're playing for you guys. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. Raynar the Ever Watchful is two white and a blue for a 2-3 legendary creature spirit warrior. He's got flying and vigilance, and the first card you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell. He also reads whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanents from the battlefield, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. Before we move on to the deck, let's go ahead and cover Raynar. His first ability that applies to foretell cards, that's not super exciting since we don't have a lot of foretell cards to build kind of a foretell themed EDH deck. There are a lot of foretell cards in this, so that is going to be relevant, but the real relevance is in his second line of text, which is whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permits from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Now I just wanted to mention real quick that it says whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permits from the battlefield. So even though it does also include exiling your opponent's permanents, it only includes one spirit for each time you exile even if you exile a lot of things at once. So things like mass board effects that exile everything, things like wings of abandon, things that exile all your opponent's stuff, those things won't give you more than just one spirit at a time. So what we're really focusing on, and if you look at the deck, you can see it's mostly focused on flickering and bouncing our creatures, exiling them, bringing back them to the battlefield, creating some enter the battlefield effects and winning through that measure. I won't go into every single card of the deck, but I have chosen 10 cards to take out and 10 cards to put in to hopefully make this deck a little bit stronger and maybe a little bit more fun to play. For the cards that we have taken out, I actually haven't touched any of the brand new cards in the commander decks. There are some Cal time ones that were taken out, but nothing brand new in the commander decks. First off, what we're taking out is Empyrean Eagle, which is one white blue for a 2-3 bird spirit it gives all of your other flying creatures plus one plus one you'll you might notice in this deck there's kind of a token sub theme where you're bouncing a lot of things as you can tell with Raynar, he's going to create you some one one creatures with flying however i don't think that this pump effect is going to really make a difference in the long run especially since some of the other ways we have of making tokens don't make flying tokens next off we've got flicker wisp which is one white white for a 3-1 elemental and when he enters the battlefield exile another target permanent and return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step now flicker wisp works perfectly with our strategy the only reason i'm taking out is because there are better includes that are at instant speed because flicker wisp does not have flash which means we can't do it at instant speed we really want things at instant speed to be able to interact especially if we're getting targeted with removal or if somebody's board wiping we definitely want that flexibility so i decided to take flicker wisp out mist raven is two blue blue for a two two bird with flying when it enters the battlefield return target creature to its owner's hand this is this is just a a plain old common i mean it has that man war esque effect it's also got flying but honestly all in all we have much better enter the battlefield effects we're taking mist raven out certland elementalist is five blue blue for an eight eight giant wizard as an additional cost of the spell reveal a giant card from your hand or pay two generic and whenever Certland Elementalist attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. Now, I was really confused as to why they put Certland Elementalist into here uh, for two reasons. Number one, there's, there is no giant theme in this deck, so you're almost always going to have to pay 9 mana for this big 8-8 giant. And the other reason, we don't have very many big massive instants or sorcery spells that we want to cast. The ones that we do want to cast, we could just cast straight off the bat by not even paying 9 mana. So I'm just taking this guy out. Don't think he's great in this deck. Warhorn Blast is four and a white for an instant. Creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn. You can foretell it for two and a white. Does have foretell on it, but giving our creatures a one-off pump for the turn. Not very exciting. Definitely some better includes. Migratory Root is three white blue for a sorcery. Create four one one white bird creature tokens with flying. It's also got basic land cycling for two generic. Honestly, the basic land cycling on this probably excites me more than creating four one one tokens. Again, there's much better spells that we could be casting. Not exciting taking it out. Next up, we've got Iron Verdict, which is two and a white for an instant. Deals five damage, target tap creature. It's also got Fortell for one white. Again, you've got some Fortell in here, but this Fortell 
effect is just really subpar. Not something I want to see in a commander deck, so we're definitely going to take this out. Next up, we've got Nico Defies Destiny, which is one white blue for a saga. First chapter, you gain two life for each foretell card you own in exile. Number two, add Azorius mana. Spend this mana only to foretell cards or cast spells that have foretell. And number three, return target card with foretell from your graveyard to your hand. Since Kaldheim is the first plane that we're going to see this foretell mechanic, we really don't want to rely on this foretell. There's just not a lot of great options to, to use this on. So we want to kind of swap out for some more tasty effects, things that actually give us the advantage of enter the battlefield effects or exiling effects. Second to last, kind of sad to see this card go. It's Arcane Artisan. For two and a blue, we have a zero three human wizard. And for two and a blue and tap, target player draws a card, then exiles a card from their hand. If a creature card is exiled this way, that player creates a token that's a copy of that card. And when Arcane Artisan leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens created with it at the beginning of the next end step. Now this was really hard. I really like Arcane Artisan in the decks that I've put it in. I just don't think that Arcane Artisan is going to fit very well in this deck. You are going to exile things from your hand, but Arcane Artisan doesn't have a lot of good targets for creatures, especially ones that we want to be making tokens of. So I'm going to take Arcane Artisan out, but I can definitely see the, the argument for why you keep it in. And last up, we've got Meteor Golem, which is a 7 mana generic 3-3 Golem that enters the battlefield and destroys a permanent and opponent controls. Definitely see this being fun if you're blinking it multiple times, but at 7 mana we've got much better things that we could be using with Enter the Battlefield effects that I will be getting to in just a second. Now again, I'm not saying that these 10 cards are the absolute ones that you should take out first. You might have an argument for why some of these cards fit in more and take out other cards, and that's okay, that's entirely up to you. This is more just a guide for where you want to start and how you want to edit this deck. With that, let's talk about the cards that I've decided to put into this deck. Again, this is all up to your opinion. There could be better ones for your deck, there could be worse ones, but here's a good start. First up, we have Eldrazi Displacer, which is two and a white for a 3-3 Eldrazi creature. It's got Devoid, and for two and a colorless mana, specifically colorless, exile another target creature, then return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. This is exactly the kind of thing that we're gonna want in this deck, a repeatable effect that allows us to be able to blink, exile things, create 1-1 birds, and get those enter the battlefield effects over and over again. There's a lot of good targets in this deck, so Eldrazi Displacer is gonna work really well with our strategy and with Raynar. Next up, we've got Mur Battlesphere. For a seven generic, we have a four seven artifact creature Mur Construct. When it enters the battlefield, put four one one colorless Mir artifact creature tokens onto the battlefield. And whenever Mir Battlesphere attacks, you may tap X untap Mir you control. If you do, Mur Battlesphere gets plus X plus zero until end of turn and deals X damage to the defending player. The reason I like Mur Battlesphere so much is because as it enters the battlefield, it will create you four tokens. So you can blink this multiple times in the turn, create a lot of tokens, and in this deck, there's a lot of ways of pumping up your creatures, so getting the more tokens out works really well. Deluvian Primordial is 5 blue blue for a 5-5 five five flying avatar, and when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. This was the first card that I thought to swap out for Certland Elementalist. This is an effect that we can use right when it enters the battlefield and keep reusing that ability as we flicker it in and out. Unlike Certainland Elementalist where you have to pay 9 mana and has to attack. Reflector Mage is 1 white blue for a 2-3 human wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. That creature's owner can't cast spells with the same name as that creature until your next turn. If you've ever faced up to a Reflector Mage, you know that this card is annoying even just the first time that it's played. But being able to bounce it repeatedly, flicker it in and out, on your battlefield and bounce your opponent's commanders, maybe utility creatures or big powerful creatures, stopping them from casting it next turn is exactly the kind of control aspect that we want in an Azurius deck, where we're not getting off to a really fast start like some of the other green based decks. Harmonious Archon is four white white for a four five creature Archon with flying. Non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness three three. And when Harmonious Archon enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens. Now, Harmonious Archon is a really good fit in this deck because it serves two of our strategies. Number one, it creates tokens when it enters the battlefield, which means we can create a lot of tokens as we blink it. And number two, it does pump up our team because most of our tokens are just 1-1s, one, one, so we're going to be able to pump them up to 3-3s three and then attack that way. Next up, Archaeomancer for two blue-blue. We have a 1-2 human wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcerer card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, Archaeomancer works super, super well with the flickering instant and sorceries because as you flicker it and it enters the battlefield, you can actually go and get 
the card that you used to flicker it in the first place. So Archaeomancy can just repeatedly get you back those cards so you can use them again and again. Cather's Crusade is 3 white white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Super relevant for our token go Y strategy. We we blink one of our creatures that makes tokens and as it enters the battlefield and creates tokens, Cather's Crusade will pump all of our other tokens and just keep doing that as we have the mana to blink our creatures. Coming in at number 8, we have Eerie Interlude. For 2 and a white, we have an instant. Exile any number of target creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this is exactly the kind of thing that we want to swap out for Flicker Wisp because, number 1, it's an instant so we can cast it on anybody's turn. And number 2, it can exile any number of creatures for the same mana, which means we can get multiple of those enter the battlefield effects and also be able to save our creatures from a board wipe. Coming in at number 9, we have Militant Angel for 3 white white. We have a 3 4 angel with flying and lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, create a number of 2 2 white knight creature tokens with vigilance equal to the number of opponents you attack this turn. At 5 mana with the potential to make 3 2 2s, that is amazing value to be able to blink repetitively on your turn. If you can blink this thing 3 times in one turn where you've attacked, you're making 9 2 2 tokens. That is super, super good, especially when we use our mass board pump effects to pump our board and swing out for the win. And coming at number 10, the card that of course has to go in this deck and any blink deck for the rest of history and time forever, it's Yorian Sky Nomad. For 3, Azorius Azorius Hybrid, we have a 4-5 legendary creature bird spirit with companion, doesn't matter. But he has flying, and when he enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. The reason Yorion is so unbelievably good in this deck, and if you've seen it at work, you know what I'm talking about. You cast Yorion, and if you have a creature that also blinks when it enters the battlefield, then you can just repeatedly blink Yorion. He enters, it blinks your whole board, your whole board comes back, that one creature blinks Yorion, and you're just creating so many tokens, and it's tough to see when to interact with this because it can be really, really overpowering. And the best part of these 10 cards is that you can pick all of these cards up right now for less than $20. That is a $20 upgrade to the Phantom Premonition deck starring Raynar the Ever Watchful. And let us know, guys, if you agree or disagree with the picks, what you would put in, what you would take out. This is really just an opportunity for people who are buying this deck to see what kind of strategies and what kind of cards to put in. So it's definitely not the end all be all. So let us know what your picks are to put in this deck and help everybody else on their way. That is going to be it for me, guys. I'm super excited for these precon decks, and I'm definitely picking up the Phantom Premonition precon and playing it with my playgroup. With all that, remember to like, subscribe, and check out all of our other content, including our Caldime deck techs that we're releasing right now, our gameplay videos, and stay tuned for some new news about Duel of the Peaks. All right, friends, my name is Griffin. This is the Command Valley, and I will see you next time.